Hi, this is uh, Michael Benjamin Jacobson or Matthew Robert Payne. This is one of my t-shirts. Everything God does is perfect. I, I um, get a lot of results. A lot of people sort of um, react to this t-shirt when they wear it out and that's a good one. I think I'll get a couple more like it. The same t-shirt a couple more times. Um, I went to bed uh, just to have a lay down. I need to uh, talk uh, to the technicians that are putting together my t-shirt site. I got this off my first t-shirt site, which was really slow in loading and I had to get my t-shirt rebuilt. And uh, so I need to speak to them in two and a half, uh, three and a half hours, uh, two and a half hours. And uh, I wanted to sleep and uh, I couldn't, um, kept on waking up and uh, the Lord led me to wake up. And so he's got some reasons for, for me to be up rather than uh, sleeping at the moment. And as I woke up and I was getting my coffee, Holy Spirit put it on my heart to do a teaching called uh, Speaking Under the Inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, if you're in a church and a pastor uh, preaches, um, I suppose, let's go through who could be speaking. Um, many pastors uh, put 10 or 20 hours of preparation into a sermon and uh, you can't help but think that that's uh, man's knowledge. Uh, of course, the Holy Spirit could be involved in uh, leading the pastor to the commentaries and uh, the stories and the things that he's got, part of his uh, printed sermon. Some of them uh, come back with some notes after 10 hours or they, they, uh, have the sermon fully written out and they just read their sermon. Uh, but uh, you've got to wonder why you do 10 or 20 hours inspiration, uh, you know, uh, research. But that's the typical thing, you know, the pastor at least put aside a day uh, to prepare his sermon and uh, sort of, Uh, out of 55 books, the only uh, preparation I did for one of my books was my parable book. It was my second book and uh, had um, the uh, parable, a householder brings out what is old and new and, uh, and a scribe or something. And uh, I looked up a commentary. I've got this commentary up here, uh, the brown book at the end there. Uh, there's two of them. Uh, uh, I don't know where the second one is, but uh, there's two of them that exist. Um, that's a uh, Warren Weasby uh, commentary on the New Testament. And I looked up uh, that passage and uh, it told me what a scribe was and uh, how uh, a scribe was someone who uh, rewrote the Bible, wrote the scrolls and uh, it was basically a writer in those times. And uh, a scribe used to uh, bring a new revelation uh, into the modern time. It wouldn't, the, the revelation wouldn't disagree with what was there hundreds of years ago, but it would be the same truth presented in the modern language with, with the modern understanding of what's going on. And, uh, thought to myself, well, that's who I am as a writer. I'm a scribe. I'm taking what was old and uh, presenting the old with the new. But that was my only preparation in 54 parables. Uh, the rest was my life. The rest, I uh, looked up the parable, uh, turned on the camera. I used to have a camera on the stand. And uh, I, used to, uh, I, I preached under inspiration, and you can look under... Uh, my um, YouTube and type in the parable and uh, you can search the 54 parables and see the original 10 minute preachers. Uh, I sort of, uh, I preached 
according to what the Holy Spirit gave me to say uh, in each of them. So if a pastor does 10 hours or 20 hours research and puts together his sermon, there's elements of flesh there, there's elements of man's knowledge there, and there's elements of the Holy Spirit. Um, if he's got a prepared sermon, and uh, it's all written out. If he reads that sermon, those elements of man, flesh, and Holy Spirit come out in the sermon. If uh, if a person has notes, like uh, these are notes on here. Uh, when I when I do someone's prophetic blueprint, which is nine or ten point major things they're meant to do with their life, the nine points are written down on a piece of paper. And uh, I have an idea when I write the points down what they mean. But then I, 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 I teach and I share under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I teach and the nine points mean. Uh, sometimes I have a point and I've got no idea what it means. The Holy Spirit just uh, writes down the point for me. And then under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I get revelation and understanding on each of the nine points. But uh, let's just say the prepared sermon, written sermon, uh, it has got flesh, uh, 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 man's doctrines, and Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, if uh, you write notes, you say you're, you're going to preach, and you've got uh, bullet point notes, uh, there's more chance that uh, the Holy Spirit can speak. Uh, if you haven't got the whole sermon written out and you're relying on just filling your mouth and not having pauses, there's a good chance the Holy Spirit can preach out of notes. Of course, you can be teaching out of your uh, flesh. You can be speaking out of man's understanding uh, or you can be speaking via the Holy Spirit. Of course, if you just open up a video and uh, share what uh, the Lord puts on your heart. You, you could be sharing out of flesh. You could be sharing man's understanding. You, you could be sharing uh, what the Holy Spirit inspires you. Uh, surely it would take practice to speak under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's important because the Apostle Paul uh, and Peter and uh, the guys who, who wrote the book, uh, even Moses, you know, whoever wrote the book, uh, they, the Bible, they, they, they wrote, they pen things under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now, even when you're inspired by the Holy Spirit, even when I just turn this camera on with no notes and speak under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, um, the things you say are determined by your own doctrines, your pet peeves. Uh, it, it can be man's knowledge. It can be man's understanding. It can, can be, uh, doctrines of men, doctrines of demons, you can still speak and be inspired, <clears throat> but the substance of what you said can have flesh and man's understanding, man's doctrine, doctrines of demons. So someone, for instance, uh, who, who is uh, totally uh, consumed by the hypergrace doctrine, uh, they can be inspired to speak and uh, come out with the uh, hypergrace, doc, hypergrace doctrine that can be inspired to speak and still come out with error. Uh, someone who conversely believes in legalism and an angry judgmental God uh, and, uh, and believes God is always angry at sinners, uh, they can speak and be inspired to speak but still come out with their wrong theology and, and their wrong understanding so the idea of speaking pure just holy spirit speaking through you it, it's uh not as easy as you think uh so uh this can be true in uh people doing personal prophecies or corporate prophetic words or uh speak speak uh, supposedly speaking on behalf of god uh their pet doctrines and their 
wrong doctrines and their wrong understandings and their moods and their frustrations, they can make God say those things. They can make God be a legalistic, uh, angry God, or they can make God be a hypergrace, a forgiving God, depending on their doctrine and their understanding. So uh, to be really clear and plain to you, uh, the Holy Spirit can inspire things, but so can wrong doctrine, wrong theology, flesh, uh, man's opinions, man's understanding, uh, the commandments of men. There's all sort of uh, information that goes into the mix. Uh, of course, uh, your flesh can speak. Uh, you can be speaking in the flesh. Uh, 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 a wrong spirit can be speaking through you. Um, you know, that's... Uh, I've heard testimony that Hitler was a very compelling and uh, um, he had sort of magnetism on what he wrote. It was very compelling and it was addictive to listen to. He put you in like a trance as, as he spoke to you. Uh, so that, that was under the inspiration of a demonic force and, uh, you know, a, a wrong spirit and that made him compelling. So one of my, um, points that I was thinking of is when you speak under the inspiration, you can just speak and speak and speak and speak for a long time and people are compelled and, and glued to it. And it's like they're uh, mag magnetized. They're, they're under a, a sort of spell. So I just listen and listen and listen. And I've had a lot of people I care about, friends of mine, say that that's what happens when I speak. So that's one of the signs of speaking under the influence of a spirit. And uh, mostly it's a, a Holy Spirit that I speak under the influence, but any wrong spirit, uh, you know, can, can uh, bring that spiritual aspect that uh, makes you compelled to listen and addicted uh, to listening. So, um, I learned off this apostle uh, who taught me. Uh, I, I had uh, four printed sermons over in India. I had this printed sermon when the apostle said I was going to speak. Uh, you got you know half a day to prepare your sermon. I said I've got a couple of sermons. He said not, you're not going to use those ones. You're just going to preach us. Simple gospel <coughs> message to the people and encouraging gospel message. And I said, yeah, I, that's what my sermons are. He said, you're not going to use your sermons. You're going to uh, prepare and get some verses and some stories and uh, you're going to preach. And I told my mum when I come back from India, I'm going to totally change the way I preach. And my mum said, uh, how do you mean? And uh, he said, just listen to him. When, when he comes back, you'll... He'll, he'll, uh, he'll tell you that he's going to change the way he preaches. And I was back in Coffs Harbour from the Indian trip and a week later we're in a shopping centre we're going through shopping and I said, Mum, I think I'm going to change the way I preach. And she said, ah, why, why? What are you going to do? And I said, I think I'm going to do it how Mucha does. I think I'll make a couple of dot points and I'll put scripture references and when it comes to preaching I'll just look up the scripture references and preach them share them and share what I feel led to say and then I'll go on to my next doc point and preach on that point and share another scripture but I'm not going to really have anything prepared just some points and some scripture references and I'm just going to speak I'm just as as I feel led to speak I'm just going to speak mum was amazed and she said how did you come up with that and I said oh, I was thinking you know that's how Mutu does it and He's the best preacher I've ever seen. Uh, I, th I think this whole preparing my, my, my sermon isn't good and I think it's second class to the Holy Spirit. Uh, I think like Mutu said to me, if you've got something prepared, that's all that can be said. But if you've got nothing prepared, you leave it in the hands of the Holy Spirit to find something for you to say and put together your sentences. And uh, I think I'll always use myself that uh, I could read my points in 30 seconds or a minute, but if I'm called to preach for an hour, that I, I, I leave myself with nothing to read. Uh, 59 minutes of the hour, I've got no notes. And 
and I, you know, I'll just leave myself in a position where the Holy Spirit has to speak. And so that's how I learned to preach under the inspiration uh, to uh, to share my heart. If if I got wrong theology, if my theology is wrong, uh, the wrong theologies would, would still come under the inspiration. Would would still and if I got man's knowledge, uh, oftentimes I'm I'm preaching and I'm sharing knowledge. Uh, you know, the Holy Spirit told me 15 years ago, wisdom is a successful application of knowledge. So knowledge isn't a bad thing. Uh, filling, <coughs> filling your sermon, filling your preach up with knowledge is a good thing if you're applying the knowledge where it's meant to be and uh, using stories and illustrations and examples of my life is, is fascinating. And that's truth too. And uh, the Holy Spirit will... Uh, I'll, I'll be speaking along and the Holy Spirit will say, now share this example. And I know uh, if I share that example, I'll be throwing myself under the bus and really uh, damaging uh, my reputation. But the Holy Spirit wants that illustration in the sermon. So I just go ahead and, and I say that. So speaking under the inspiration is something bold. It's something... Uh, that a lot of people can't do. Although I've seen famous preachers, uh, you know, leave their pulpit and uh, they've got their iPad and their iPads on the pulpit and they've just left uh, their iPad there and they've just gone off and preached for an hour. <coughs> they they may have a lot prepared on the iPad and they may be preaching according to the notes on the iPad, but when they're away from that iPad for an hour. Uh, they've put themselves in a position where the Holy Spirit can give them the inspiration for, for what they say. Um, I, I find uh, that I, I'm really funny. Uh, people could say I'm proud and uh, it's a demonstration of pride uh, when I say it, I suppose, or it sounds prideful that uh, very, very, few, um, very few preachers uh, compel me to even listen these days. Uh, most preaching uh, is boring to me. And uh, I find it boring. And, uh, and there's even some major preachers who have got uh, sermons uh, that I want to know about that subject and I can't stand more than 20 minutes of them preaching. Preachers who used to be compelling to me uh, aren't compelling anymore. And... Uh, I get more activated and compelled in a fictional movie done by people who don't even need Jesus or know Jesus than, than uh, most preachers out there. Uh, but that's simply because my life is built on revelation. My life is built on obedience and revelation and uh, practicing truth and going after truth. And when I see error being taught, when I see um, people preaching and it's not one mention of revelation that they heard in the last week or the last couple of weeks. If the people are just preaching from man's doctrines and man's commentaries and doctrines of men and no knowledge or mistaught knowledge <coughs> of uh, the scripture, the Christian faith, it's really boring to me. And uh, I apologize for saying so uh, because that sounds like really prideful of me, but that's the truth. And uh, I, I uh, even uh, coming to this and sharing this message uh, about preaching under the inspiration, uh, I listen to my mouth. I, I listen to the words coming out of my mouth, and they're compelling. It's an amazing argument. It's it's amazing uh, teaching. Uh, so um, I'm compelled uh, to preach it and and do uh, what I do. Most of my um, most of my videos uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit I get given the subject to speak on and uh, when I have no notes <coughs> or even when I have notes uh, it, it comes out comprehensive and profound and beautiful and that's who the Holy Spirit is comp comprehensive profound and beautiful he'll use your knowledge he'll, he'll use your wrong doctrines he'll use your doctrines of man he'll he'll use doctrines of demons uh, to put forth a message of course you could never <coughs> preach or you could never share a message uh, if you had to be free of all your wrong belief. <coughs> Before you spoke, if, 
you have to be free of all your wrong belief and wrong doctrines before you ever preached, no one would be preaching. <laughs> so um, it's not a sin and it's not wrong. And the Holy Spirit may inspire you what to say. And you could even have wrong theology or wrong doctrine in what you're saying. Because uh, you'd never be free. You know, you know people, there, there'd be no one ever preaching if they had to have right theology uh, to be able to preach or uh, to be led or moved or uh, preach under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So hope that wasn't confusing to you. I uh, hope it gives you some insight. I uh, hope you have some understanding. But uh, I, number one, I have to be inspired on what to speak on. Uh, number two, most of the time I have to have no notes so that the words in my mouth are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And number three, uh, there can be elements of mistruth in what I say, and I still speak under the inspiration because that's the only knowledge I know, and that's the knowledge I'm sharing. Uh, so uh, I hope uh, that encourages you. I know a famous uh, speaker left the earth uh, in September last year, Neville Johnson, and he sat down and he, he read my 55 books in the first day he was in heaven. He said, uh, my books teach a perfect theology. And uh, he's very impressed with the theology in my books. So I know most of what I believe in is true, uh, but I've still got a lot of religion in me. I've still got a lot of religious sort of language. And, uh, and that'll come out of me the longer I uh, stay out of church, stay out of organised religion. So uh, I hope uh, this was uh, impactful for you. I look forward to uh, your comments and your feedback on this. Uh, God bless.